ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती हरियंताणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सिद्धाणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती आयर्याणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती ओज्जायाणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सावणम ओम कारम बिंदु संयुक्तम नित्यं दायंति योगिनम कामदम मोक्षदम शैव ओंकाराय नमो नमः तीर्थंकरो According to the date, English date, November 9th, today is actually Srimad Rachandra Ji's birthday. So he's it's a 153rd birthday. He finishes 153 years today, and he's entering 154th year. So actually, from the Indian calendar, it comes on a Kartik Purnima, Kartik Sukla Purnima. But because of her Indian calendar, this time there was an extra month, and that's why we have uh, his birthday is coming today. Uh, Indian calendar is a moon calendar, moon rising and moon setting, fifteen days each, so three hundred sixty days, and the English calendar is three hundred sixty-five and one quarter day. And so every four, five years or six years, uh, there is going to be an extra month in the Indian calendar. So this is that extra month, and that's why his actual birthday coming on. Uh, Kartik Purnima gets a little bit pushed out, you know. Anyway, so we just have to remember that uh, this is a, a very happy occasion that uh, we have we have learned so much from Srimad Ji and uh, such a great personality. Too bad that he he did not have longer age, and so he just expired. He left this mundane world uh, about at the age of thirty-four. But in his 34 years of life, what he has done is a super, 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 super exciting things, and uh, one of those things is this atmosphere disaster that we are going through. It's a simple two-line stanza, each one. But when we go and dissect it deeper and deeper and deeper, a tremendous amount of meaning comes out. And that's what we are uh, experiencing right now when we are going through all those things. So we are on the seventh stanza right now. So without further delay, I'll bring the slides and we'll continue from there. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> we'll play the stanza first and then uh, uh, that will refresh our memory and then uh, we'll continue from there. Simple looking stanza, anybody can recite, but having a deep, deep, deep internal meaning. What it says, the renunciation and apathy to the outside of a worldly affair. That has to be the basis for somebody to obtain um, uh, right, right faith and right knowledge. So it's essential. It has to be, a, it has to be there for eligibility purpose. But if Viragma, if somebody gets stuck there and he says, oh, I have achieved everything and that's it, you know, then he is just stuck there and he just remains devoid of right faith. And that is out of all the four realms of existence, human life is the easiest way one can get self-realization and if we get stuck in this renunciation and uh, uh, abstinence from the worldly affair, etc., then it just doesn't serve the purpose because now we are missing the boat. This human life we are getting in such a long, after long, 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 long time. Extreme amount of auspiciousness you may have done in the past, and that's why one has obtained the human life, and we are wasting away that life. So he feels kind of oh, very sorry for us that uh, how can one, 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 one waste the life? So renunciation, etc., is important thing, but if, uh, that is a stepping stone and one is to go further. So don't get stuck there. That's what he tries to tell us. And on that basis, we have gone through a few of the slides yeah, last week. And now we are going to continue more from further down the low road. This one we have done it, said from this slide, unfamiliarity with the external object. Now, now this, this whole thing shows the flowchart, how, where one is and what one has to do to achieve the aim. Number one, I am involved with the external objects since time infinite. What are those external objects? Physical body, physical body is an alien object. It's, it's not my own true nature. It's an external object. It's a matter object. I'm the conscious soul and conscious soul and matter objects are entirely two different, uh, two different substances. Yes, in the soul and matter, they both occupy same space point. So from your top of your head to the bottom of your feet, if you just feel something, because soul is present in each and every minute part of the physical body, they both are merged together, it appears, but they are separate. If you put oil and water in a flask and you keep on shaking, 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 it appears at one point that they both are merged together, but pretty soon you can see the separateness. Well, is that the right example? Uh, rather than that, let's get some better example. You have a milk and you put the glass of water in the milk. Water and milk, they both will end up occupying same space point. You cannot separate where, which part is water, which part is milk. By only by chemical formula, chemical in nature, you can separate that water ultimately. But similarly, 
this external object, this physical body, even though occupying safe, same space point, it's an external object for the body, for the soul. So one becomes, one creates an unfamiliarity with that. That it's there, that's it. I don't, one doesn't give undue importance to that physical body. Not to have intimacy with this internal, uh, with the external object. They are there, association is there, association is meant for dissociation, association with the physical body is a birth, dissociation is called death, in which both the events, eternal, uh, the, the, the soul remains soul, matter remains matter, they don't change, they, they don't get destroyed, they simply change the form. Consider the external object as useless. Now the soul says that those external objects are not useful to me. Those, those princes and kings in the past, all 24 Tirthankars, they were either prince or they were the kings. And they gave up all those the, the, the absolute comfort that they had it. They just gave up all the thing and walked out of the palaces. Not only walked out, they gave up everything. Only act physical body that they cannot separate it out. That's why only physical body is the part of that soul and everything else is given up. No clothes whatsoever. The Gumbar scriptures are very strict. They say that even if teeny tiny material object one keeps it, then his monkhood is not there. They are very strict conduct wise. It's a very, very strict phenomenon. Those Aklank Niklank story comes. They both were giants. And they wanted to learn some of the scriptural thing. And it was only some of the Sanskrit, etc., was only available in the Buddhist place. But Buddhist university will not allow them to be admitted because they were giants. So they just took the, uh, 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 they just went as a Buddhist and they got uh, enrolled and they started learning. And some of the student and faculty, they realized that these guys, I don't, I don't think that we, we don't think that these guys are really Jains. I mean, they, they, are not, they, are not, they are not really Buddhist. So they wanted to test them out. They wanted to prove first, test them out. So they knew the giants are extremely strict in their conduct. And Jain, they when they worship their Lord, the, the statue of the Lord, that statue does not have any attachment to any cloth whatsoever. It's a plain, pure, naked, say, a naked uh, um, 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 uh, statue of the Lord. So they tried so many things, but they cannot, they, they are not successful to identify them as a giant. So finally, one trick they decided, they brought the Tirthankar Bhagwan's Murthy. And they say, now you jump over this statue. And Aklank and Niklank, they say that now today is a time that we cannot jump over Tirthankar Bhagwan's Murthy. And if we don't jump, that means we'll be caught. And when we'll be caught, that means they will throw us out or they will kill us, whatever, whatever. They will kill us. So then they just found out a trick 
and they took teeny tiny piece of cloth and threw it on this to a statue. And now they say, because the, 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 the cloth went on the statue, means that is not the real statue of the monk and or Tirthankar. So then they went on jumping on that. So this trick, the, the officials, they found out. And now they say that you guys are giants. And so they say, we are going to kill you. So they started running. And one brother told the other, listen, Aklank, you are a strong runner. You go. I'll be caught. I'll be killed. But at least you learn all these things and you can put it in the form of a scriptures. So it is extremely important. They both brothers started arguing. And so finally, a clunk started running and uh, Niklunk was caught and he was killed. So what I'm trying to say, considering external object as useless means for the Tirthankar and for the monks, all the external objects, except for physical body, which they cannot remove. That means they are useless for them. No amount of comfort will make them happy or no amount of calamities will make them sad. They are in an equanimity state and grows within their own eternal state. The thought process getting stronger and increasing the self-discipline. This type of monks, this type of living being, now he has nothing to worry about uh, external object that all the thought related to the external object that there is no room for it and they have more time to reflect upon themselves they are this thought process becomes stronger and purer and they they, they increase the self discipline External objects importance is now further reducing as the internal strength increasing further above the importance of the external object is further decreasing. Internal renunciation gets stronger and stronger. Mind and soul getting purer. Study of the, uh, study of the souls getting stronger and Ultimately, such type of soul ends up with the experiencing, and that is called self-realization, that's called Atma Darshan, that's called Samkit, that's called Samyak Darshan, whatever name you want to give. So these are the way one for so gradually taking away the external dependency and increasing the internal dependency by leaps and bounds ultimately ends up with this self-experiencing state. Dry, knowledgeable person believes there is no need for external activities. Now, again, Simaji keeps on just scolding such type of souls. The dry, knowledgeable person, Shushka Gnani, he says, there's no need for any external activities. Forget about it. It's useless. It's unnecessary and reason for karma bonded. When we are doing the physical activity, even the auspicious activity, that will end up with the auspicious karma bondage. Karma bondage will occur. And so this dry knowledge of a person says, this external activities are the results of karma bondage. It's the auspiciousness and thereby to be discarded because auspiciousness is a altered state. It's not the true state of the soul. You have to take both into consideration, auspicious or inauspicious. But no religion on the earth will say that go and do inauspicious activity. So we are not talking inauspiciousness at all. It's, 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 it's to be understood that if one has come up to this level of understanding scriptural sense, then he is not indulging in the inauspicious activity at all. So, auspicious activity is only remaining, but this dry, knowledgeable person said that even auspicious activity also to be discarded because it is a karma bondage, etc., etc. 
this, therefore, this guy with the dry knowledgeable person, he acts, he acts on his self-willed nature. Whatever he presumes is right, he just starts to uh, behaving that way. But that's not the true state. That's not the right thing. Instead of auspiciousness, he has now, remember, what's he, what is he saying? Auspiciousness is the reason for karma bondage. So he's not doing auspiciousness and he's doing his self-willed nature. And by doing that way, by doing that way, he is not doing auspiciousness and he's indulging in the inauspicious activity. So he's even the, on the worst path than normal person. So these are the things that we have to keep in mind. Um, giving up milder form of passions and indulging in intense passion. So he is auspicious, he's milder and milder type of toxic emotion. Instead, now he's involved with the intense type of toxic emotions and he is now much more in trouble. He, he, he just like giving up the bitter taste and accepting poison. Bitter taste is in the form of auspiciousness and poison is a, in the form of inauspiciousness. So only dry knowledge is useless. If one guy is saying if, that uh, the banana, two, one dollar will have two kilos of the banana, for example. I know that very well. One dollar is two pounds. One dollar is two pound banana. One dollar is two pound banana. But then I don't know the applied knowledge. It means I want to buy four pounds of banana. Now what? One dollar is two pounds. I want to buy four pounds. How much money I have to pay? I, he doesn't remember that. He doesn't know that. He simply knows one dollar is equal to two pounds of banana. So he doesn't know the applied ma mathematics. He doesn't know the applied science. He just remains with this dry knowledge, but he does not apply in the right form. And that's why he is dangerous person. On the other side of the coin, that blind ritualist, he just simply believes in rituals and not nothing more. So he's also in dangerous path. This guy is also in dangerous path. So they are stuck dry knowledge or in the, in the other form of a, uh, ritualistic, they are not progressing from there. And that's why it's bad. That's what Simaji says here. In the past, many times he gave up family, etc. It says in the literature, I think Simaji has said, yes, somewhere, that if you take the all the mupattis, you know, for, for the muni, they will have a mupatti, Swetambar and Stana Kwasi Munira. If you take those mupatti and start making collection of those mupattis from the past, that means you took so-called monkhood many times in the past. That means you became human many times in the past. And out of many times that you became human, lot more time you took the so-called diksha and those mupati, if you collect, it will have a, the, the, the hip will be bigger than the height of the Meru, Mount Meru. That many times one has taken diksha, etc. But it has not fulfilled anything to me. Why? Why I did not have self-realization? What was the reason for that? First, one is to have proper understanding of reality. Not understanding reality. Not knowing the truth. Not knowing the right thing. One time we had a, 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 many, many years back, when, uh, one of our community girl was getting engaged and the uh, guests were coming from Chicago and uh, girl's parents, they are our good friends, so they called us and we are all waiting in the evening. And then they say, okay, this is before internet era and before uh, GPS and everything. 
So and you guys are, if you are born before GPS, you know at least how it is. This new generation, they have no idea how we used to travel from point A to point B, how we used to get directions, et cetera. They don't know what was the triptych. And I don't know if you guys also remember the triptych that we used to go to AAA and then they will make those little booklet and all crazy things, whatever. So here, same way. That, 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 that family landed at Phoenix airport and now they call from the pay phone or whatever and the host gave the directions how to come to their home. They started coming and coming and coming and coming and here we are waiting and waiting and waiting. It was weekdays, we are getting hungry and everything. Finally, they, the, the host called that, hey, you know, we are somewhere in the desert, somewhere we don't know where we are. There's no lights, no nothing, it's total dark. Where are you? We are on the 10 east in just go, going towards Tucson. So wait a second. Did you take a right turn? Yes, you are supposed to take a left turn. So not understanding the reality and you start just running, 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 you will go on the wrong track. So first sit down, it's okay. Take a deep breath, try to understand the reality, where I am, what's my status, what's, what's, what I'm supposed to do, understand. Understand that one, understanding. And thereafter, automatically all the conduct will follow. Today also, if you are going from point A to point B and now you open, sit down the car and put the GPS, it just shows the whole map and it just says now 15 miles and 20 minutes you will reach there and whatever, whatever. And you start because you have directions, right directions. Now you start. Similarly here, the, the, the path to the salvation, path to the liberation is a long path. You to understand the reality, you to understand nitty gritty thing, you to understand the pitfalls, sit down, go through it, understand it, and then take a giant step and each step you will take it, it will be towards some Darshan. So, don't rush the, oh my God, I have to do this, this, this. Just, just chill, chill yourself. It, it, understand the reality. Understanding, understand, when in, in the beginning of my years, when I used to, I, I mean, you know, my, my, my dad was a learned person. And so he, he wanted to impart, he tried to impart knowledge to all of our, of our brothers, but uh, unfortunately nobody showed interest. And uh, uh, he caught me and he started telling me, you know, what's the soul is there and soul is this and that. Okay, dad, soul is there. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's tell me next. And he said, no, 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 that's not true. Once you say soul is there, that means body is not you. That means your action should reflect accordingly. But since morning till night, 24-7, I'm at the service of this body. So then what did I learn? So reality to understand. Once I understand reality thoroughly, then automatically my action will go in a positive direction. Each step will be towards some exertion. So then it's the right thing. With attention to eternal self, the influence of attachment state decreases. I, O, A, most of the places I will use because it's called inclination of attachment. Rag dasha. When I have attention to the eternal self, then my influence of attachment starts diminishing. If you're facing east, and now I say turn towards west, 180 degree. Slowly you are turning. So while you are turning from east to west, each degree that you turn, that means that much east you gave up, that much west you gain it. Similarly, when eternal soul substance attention is drawn, that means purity starts increasing and proportionately impurity in the form of in increase of attachment starts decreasing. Giving up bodily activities produces auspicious. Yes, 
That's true. Bodily activity produces auspiciousness. There is nothing wrong. So conventional state, but don't stop it. That's a conventional state. This, this auspiciousness is a conventional state only. It's just halfway I am. I still have to go another half to realize myself. So it, it, it does occur, but one does not stop here. It's just the comma. It's not the full stop up to here when I'm here. It's a comma. I, for the full stop, I still need to have a journey for somewhat more, somewhat more intense journey I have to do it. Keep aim for the right faith all the time. You don't lose your aim. Aim is a right faith. Now, remember, we are living, we are the mundane soul. We live as a human being. We live in our, our, our family life and all those things we are doing it. So chances that we may kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, we were away from our uh, uh, aim, but we have to make sure that that aim should not get lost. Aim should be there all the time, constantly reminding me that eternal soul substance is my true nature. We have to keep thinking that way. External renunciation. What happens in external renunciation? Due to non-destructive karma association and dissociation of the alien object occur. Now, how does external renunciation occur? Means how come I am giving up my attachment to the external being? Because there is a presence of non-destructive karma. Non-destructive karma are the reason for my associative or dissociative relationship with the alien object. Non-destructive karma are called aghati karma, right? So aghati karma and ghati karma, we know those two names, destructive karma, non-destructive karma. Now, I may ask question to both of you, let me know. What does destructive karma do to me? I'm the soul. What do they do to me? You can unmute and let me know. Destructive karma, what do they do to me? Yes, Sachin, go ahead. So destructive karmas uh, basically uh, See, actually speaking, uh, karma doesn't do anything, right? Uh, very, nice. very good. Very, it's a great beginning. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. Karmas basically don't do anything. It is because of our uh, our uh, attachment, attachment and detachment. Yes. Uh, to to uh, you know all the other things other than the soul. Yeah. That uh, gives rise to this karmas, which keeps coming up. So actually speaking, it, it does not affect the soul, uh, but because of our attachment and detachment into other things other than the soul, yeah. uh, the karmas keeps uh, you know coming and going and it keeps accumulating. Uh, so if if uh, we we focus only on our soul, uh, then I think the the karmas will will you know will will automatically you know it will, it will shed and go away. It, it's it's absolutely right and I'm, I'm so proud of you really very very well that you put it in but then my question is why the name destructive karma if they didn't do, didn't do anything then why are they called destructive karma gati karma kem kaya what do they do? Do they do something? And you are right, absolutely. They don't do anything to the soul. So why the name Gati Karma, destructive karma? What's the reason? Think about it. Mm. Okay. It, it, you, you almost gave 90% of the answer. So what happens basically that soul by itself ends up doing rag and dvesh, right? I do rag and dvesh, anger, deceit, ego, greed. That's another name of rag and dvesh. Mm -hmm. 
when you say rag and dvesh or krodman mayalob they are the same thing rag right. means influence of attachment means rag that means maya and lob that's called rag and dvesh inclination of aversion means anger and deceit they are called inclination of aversion so inclination of attachment inclination of aversion rag or dvesh or anger deceit ego greed krodh man maya lok they are the same 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 thing so who is ends up doing it i end up doing it as a soul i do it nobody asked me to do it hmm if if there is a banana peel and i slip on it and there are about 10 15 people in the party or the party are present and i fell down and i have a choice now to become angry or to laugh it over choice is mine i have fallen down and my, most of the time i will become angry probably but choice is mine i can also get up and say hey look me dummy i fell down thank god i didn't break my hip right now i, I can laugh it out too right so choice is mine so i am the reason doing anger deceit ego greed likes and dislike while i do that while i am doing that state the karma are present in the form of instrumental cause only few days back in phoenix it was 85 90 degree temperature today last night onwards it dropped down to 60 so what is my thermostat in the house will be showing two days back it was showing 90 today it will show 60 so job of the thermostat is to reflect what is present in the house in the sense i feel extremely cold right now that means thermostat will show 60 55 whatever if i'm extremely hot perspiring uncomfortable difficult to breathing then thermostat will show 100 105 whatever so job of thermostat is simply simply to reflect how i feel here if i'm feeling perfectly all right right now then thermostat will be showing 72 74 so i feel perfectly okay thermostat is thermostat shows a certain temperature if i feel hot and perspiration it shows different number if i'm feeling cold and chilly it shows different so thermostat shows what i feel karma are same as thermostat they show what i feel internally i am angry internally so it will show anger producing material karma fruition indication if i'm greedy within greed producing material karma in fruition so they are simply instrumental cause they don't do anything they simply reflect what is happening inside me that's why when i have anger deceit ego greed type of destructive mode within me means it's a altered mode means i'm not in my true state at that time that's why that altered state is called i'm destroying my true nature and that's why instrumental cause form of a karma presence they are giving name destructive karma they have not done anything they are just simply reflecting my internal state so those are the thing so over here what it says over here simple thing due to non now we are talking non destructive karma here we just described destructive non destructive karma what do they do they don't do anything also they just provide simply associative thing to the soul i have a nice clothes and nice house and nice car etc etc so 
the uh, non-destructive karma just produce associative thing to me. I am. I have a disease going on. I have terminal cancer. I am in extreme pain. I am very uncomfortable. That means non-destructive karma gave association of unfavorable situation to me. The non-destructive karma gave association to Mahavir, and Mahavir was born as a prince. And he is a prince throughout his life, I mean, in the younger age. But in spite of that, Mahavir gave up everything, all the comfort he gave up. So destructive karma didn't say, hey, don't do the non-destructive didn't say, hey, don't do that, don't do that. Mahavir said, so what? I want to give up everything. I don't need that one. So non-destructive karma cannot do anything. It just simply provides the situation. That's it. So external renunciation. Mahavir gave up something. So non-destructive karma association or dissociation. The good karma dissociation occurred. And here external renunciation occurred. External renunciation Mahavir did by himself. Wrong faith means I can accept and discard alien object. When you say alien means a worldly object. So I have the wrong faith that I can accept. I have got this phone with me. Well, this is an old phone. Tomorrow I'm getting a new phone. So I'm accepting new phone. I'm going to reject this old. I cannot do that. I have this simply wrong, wrong faith with me that yes, I can give up something. I accept something, but there is no capacity within me to accept any alien object within me. If I would have accepted any material object in this life, or any previous millions and billions and trillions and trillions of lives from before. If I would have accepted even a simple one atomic particle of matter, I as a soul would have been destroyed because I cannot accept or destroy anything, discard anything. Right or wrong faith person cannot accept, even right faith person, even Mahavir, even Lord, even the Muniraj, even one with the right faith, or us like wrong faith people, we cannot accept or discard any object. So, uh, because in my soul, there is no capacity for anything external thing to enter within me. Keeping attention to the eternal soul and the external renunciation could be helpful. Now, this external renunciation that I did, or Mahavir gave up his worldly life, then his attention is always on the pure soul. Mahavir wanted to purify his soul completely. Kunkun Acharya wanted to purify his soul completely. Gurudev wanted to purify his soul completely. So at that time, external renunciation could be helpful, could be helpful. By positive virtues cultivation, by positive virtue cultivation, the negative instrument cause disappears. My virtues, I'm, as a positive virtues I'm cultivating, that means my negative states just disappearing. If I'm giving, inter, if there's a blackboard and I, 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 I drew one line, white line, three inches, four inches line, and I told you, Make this line small by without touching that line, without erasing that line. How can you make it small? Instead of three inch line, now you draw a 12 inch line next to it. Automatically, this line becomes small. 
So when you positive virtue, when you cultivate the negative instrumental cause situation starts to disappear. In the discourses, the sentences of instrumental cause comes, but one should know one should know it one should know its real meaning. Means in the scripture, it will just say if you open the Dawla Grand or Shatkandagam Grand. They are the they are the scripture related to karma karma related scriptures, and this there is there is a definite sentence I will be coming that knowledge obscuring karma obstructs the knowledge. Let me repeat again: knowledge obscuring karma obstructs the knowledge. In that sentence, is it true? Well, it doesn't appear to be true from all the things that we learned so far here. But knowledge obscuring karma are the instrumental cause. And so that whole sentence is from the instrumental cause perspective. That's it. So it's our duty to understand what is right and what is not right. We have to know the basis. If we know the basis properly, then we can say in the Dawla Granth, when the sentence says, the knowledge obscuring karma obstructs knowledge, means knowledge obscuring karma acts as instrumental cause, and as a result, the knowledge expression in the soul is blunted. I have a blunted form of expression of the knowledge and on this side knowledge obscuring karma are present as an instrumental cause. Now if I give importance to the instrumental cause then it will be saying knowledge obscuring karma obstructs the knowledge but actually they are two separate events. So we have to have the clarity in our mind. Because somebody will come and tomorrow you will just say knowledge is occurring because of knowledge and knowledge of screen karma are simply instrumental cause. If you say that, some people will come out with this Dawla Granth and say, look, look here, look here, your own Acharya wrote down this one. Then you have to explain it's an instrumental cause perspective sentence. So buck stops at me. I have to understand what's a reality, what's a true form. Because spoken form and written, written, written words, they have limitation. They will not be able to give the correct meaning unless I know them by myself. What is destructive karma? We already talked. When there is presence of in, uh, influence of attachment state, rag, or influence of aversion means dvesh, then these karma are simply instrumental cause. That's why they are called destructive karma because rag and dvesh, they are my, not my true nature, means I obstructed my true nature by myself. And at that time, Karma fruition in the form of instrumental cause, and that's that's why they are called destructive karma. What's a non-destructive karma? This this soul ends up getting associated with thing. That's it. So they, 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 this is by knowing this one. If we can understand this thing, you know, you understand. You you understood the whole. Karma Granth right now. Because Dhaula and Shatkanda Gam, etc., all those scriptures will talk about destructive and non destructive karma. Now you understand where do the karma stand? They are simply instrumental cause. You are aware of it. You do not get misled. See, our, our Jains, mainly what happens. We don't believe in creator God, maintainer God, destroyer God. We don't believe Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, etc. So there is, we, we don't believe them at all. 
okay, okay. Because we are Jain, so we don't believe them, okay. But then we Jains get stuck on this karma. The karma can do this to me. Karma can do that to me. Obst the, the obstructive, uh, I mean, the, the, the uh, uh, pain producing karma are the reason for my loss and pleasure producing karma are the reason for my gain and everything. So we get stuck on this karma. We don't believe in a creator God, destroyer, maintainer God, but then we giants get stuck on this karma. You have to understand that not to get stuck there also. It's very important because if we know this two, 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 two bullets over here, if we understand that, then you will not get misled. Today morning, somebody sent me some, something on the Padmaviti Devi. And he says to me that uh, by, by uh, worshipping Padmaviti Devi, you can get everything what you desire materially. You mean that Padmaviti Devi is sitting doing nothing and she is just ready to offer to me something? What did I do for her? Simply reciting the name and she's very happy. She's going to give me something. Never. Nothing happens. There was a story that one, one Brahmin, poor Brahmin, in the, in the desert he's walking. And it's a, it's a July. It's like July in Phoenix, for example. Extremely hot and he's walking barefoot. But he's reciting Bhagwan's name all the time, Shankar Parvati, Shankar Parvati, whatever, whatever. And on the from the sky, the Shankar and Parvati, they are going out, going out in their plane. And so Parvati tells Shankar that look, look at your, you look at your uh, uh, disciple, poor guy. He's reciting your name, and you can't give anything to him. Look at him, how poor he is. He has no no feet, no 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 shoes on the feet and everything. You should do something. And Shankar said, no, 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 he's, it is not, he's not supposed to get it because that is his fortune saying that way. No, you should do something. So Shankar put some big, huge diamond on the, on the path that guy was walking. And at the same time, that Brahmin guy started thinking that if I could be blind, how will I be walking? So he started close, he closed the eyes and started walking and the diamond came under the feet, but he did not realize. So Shankar said, see, he was not supposed to get it, so he didn't get it. So nobody is going to give you something just by you praying to somebody. No, it will not happen. If you say, no, if you say, mala, and say, namorentan, 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 and then you go for your exam, are you going to pass your exam? 100% you are going to fail. If you have done work, homework, then you will pass. So if we, the, the, the karma dependency or somebody else is going to give me something, that attitude, that beggarness, we should just remove from our, um, from our mind. We, you know, uh, when we just, is, is, uh, we, we speak that uh, erg about uh, uh, Dev Sastra Guru erg, Nishchit tere sadasa prabhu arahanta avastha paonga. What we are telling to Lord, hey Lord, I'm pure, not in the form of beggar, but I'm pure as in the form of challenger. I'm challenging you. The path you have shown me, I'm going to walk on it and I will become like you. I, yeah, I came here to become like you. I'm not here to ask for something, begging something. So those are the things. If we understand this, this, this bullet alone, your dependency on the alien objects of the universe will come to an end for sure. So um, almost the time is up. So I may wait over, stop over here. If there's a question, we can take it. Any questions, both of you? Yes, anything? No, no questions. Okay, all right, okay.
All right, so then we can just do the closing then, okay? All right. Jisvarupa samajya vina pamyo dukha anan samajayo te padanam si sadaguru bhagavan param purusha prabhu sadaguru param jnana sukhadam jene apyo banani stene sada pranam De hachata jeni dasha varte de hati a prabuji na charanama ho vande agani a nami na charanama ho vande agani Jai Jinendra. Jai Jinendra, thank you, Kirit Bhai. Thank you. Thank you.